Have you ever heard of binge eating disorder? Hello, my name is Stephanie. I'm a therapist on Long Island, New York that specializes in the treatment of eating disorders and body image issues. If you like this video at the end, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're interested in learning more about eating disorders, eating issues, body image issues, general mental health and well-being, and therapeutic tools, please subscribe to my channel. I will be posting every Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. Today I wanted to talk more about the idea or the disorder, the binge eating disorder. Um, so some people have heard of it and other people haven't. Um, other people haven't. Now the thing with binge eating disorder is it's becoming more and more recognized as a disorder. However, it's not new. And this is a, a problem that's been going on for a while. Um, this not recognizing it as an issue. A lot of times people will say, um, who are not aware of it being an eating disorder, will talk about um, binging or binge eating disorder as a form of someone being, um, having lacking willpower or lacking self-control um, or that they have to be a significant amount of weight for them to have it um, and that it's just this very, very negative thing that's just surrounding it. it it's viewed as, as very differently as for instance anorexia is viewed as. Meanwhile it's also an eating disorder. I really want to distinguish what binge eating is as opposed to just overeating. Um, so overeating, we all do it at some points. I mean, sometimes you find something that you really, really like and you just like, you really like it, so you're just gonna eat more than what you, um, what it takes just to be satisfied. It happens, it's okay. Um, and sometimes we're maybe not really paying attention and then we realize that we eat, ate a little bit more than what we wanted to, uh, what our bodies were telling us, you know, past the point of our bodies telling us that we were full. Uh, now binge eating, binge eating typically is when you are consuming a large amount of food um, in a small period of time or a small window of time where it becomes to the point of you feeling very, very ill um, or even pain from the amount that you had consumed. I think that we use the word binge a lot in our culture where it seems to kind of um, invalidated or devalued the term for binge eating disorder. I mean, we're constantly saying like, oh, I'm just sitting on my couch binge watching Netflix or something like that. Um, and it, it's something that we need to recognize that, I mean, you can use that term, but to recognize that for binge eating disorder, this is a, this is a big thing and it's a, not um, a positive for a person in their life. It's a problem for them. Now I wanted to talk about some behaviors that you'll see um, or you may or may not see with someone struggling with binge eating disorder. So for any eating disorder or for really any mental health issue, you will see different um, different expressions of the disorder. Not every behavior is going to be the same for every person. Not every person who is diagnosed with a certain thing will express the same behaviors in the same exact way. Or maybe they might not express all the behaviors. That's just um, life, nothing is textbook definition. Uh, so when we see with binge eating disorder, there's a lot of different behaviors that we'll typically see. I'll talk more about the ones that I see more. So one, drive through runs. So you'll see sometimes for people who are struggling with binge eating disorder, and you'll also see this in bulimia, but I'm not going to talk about that disorder in this video. I'll talk about it in another video. Um, so drive through runs that you might go to a bunch of different drive throughs and getting a bunch of different food um, and maybe you might even consume it all in your car. Maybe you'll go home and kind of, um, you know, eat it alone. Usually this does take place alone um, because there's a lot, there tends to be a lot of shame surrounding the behaviors. So typically people who are engaging in any type of binge eating disorder binge eating disorder behaviors don't want others to see because they feel shameful about their behaviors. So like I said, you'll often see it occurring alone. So um, you'll see drive through runs. So you might go to a bunch of different drive throughs and pick up a lot of different food um, and then consume it. Another thing that you might see is uh, hiding food. So hiding food, again, this is because there's a lot of shame usually associated with these types of uh, behaviors that let's say you might eat um, a bunch of food or you might have bought a bag of a box of cookies or something like that and you may actually make the conscious effort to put it all in a bag, put it in your car and drop it off in a dumpster nearby so that no one around you or nowhere in your house will be aware of the, the binge eating 
or perhaps uh, you might take the the wrapper or something and put it underneath the other garbage in the garbage bin and try to you know push it down a little bit so it's not visible to the other people in your house again this is because of the shame that's surrounding it we also often see binging occurring at nighttime um, and a big reason for this is again the shame there's a lot of shame associated with it I know I keep saying that because it's such a big deal uh, when it comes to binge eating disorder uh, so a lot of people they might um, engage in their binges more at nighttime um, they'll draw the blinds so that it you know no one can see in or there it gives them the perception of privacy keep the lights dim or off maybe um, and then engage in their binge and hoping no one wakes up, no one comes along and seeing them. Uh, and obviously when it's at nighttime um, and people are sleeping, there's a less likelihood of being um, caught or walked in on when you're engaging in those binging behaviors. Let's talk about why a person may turn to binge eating. Um, so two main factors that I see often with binge eating um, is one, it provides comfort for the person who is engaging in the behaviors uh, or it's also a numbing um, type of behavior so it can help to numb your physical and emotional um, emo emotional experiences uh, so now let's see how this might actually play out a person might be super anxious in a in their daily li life and we all we all let me backtrack we all engage in coping skills, whether or not you realize them or recognize them as coping skills. And coping skills in and of themselves are not necessarily positive. We view them as po a positive thing, but there are coping skills that are positive, such as, um, you know, coloring or journaling or something like that. Uh, but then there are also coping skills that are not so positive and they are maladaptive. Smoking, drinking, um, drug use, uh, or eating disorders. So there's a lot of things on that end as well. So when, if a person's feeling super anxious or whatever they are experiencing in their life, or maybe they had trauma in their childhood that they never really dealt with and they're looking for some th sort of comfort or some sort of numbing experience and the binging is providing that for them. So that makes it very difficult to work on that and to move forward it's not about willpower it's not about oh just stop eating so don't say that to them because that's going to make them feel even worse and like i said several times shame is such a big factor in this disorder so if you love i'm sure you love the person that you're trying to talk to if you know someone who is experiencing um these types of behaviors and um, just coming from this idea that you know now a little bit more about what might be going on try to be sensitive about it try to know that it's not something that they're just choosing it's not something that is just solely a matter of willpower it's something that she they she or he is really really struggling with and now why are all these habits so hard to kick because they're the thing that provides us with the most immediate relief from what we're looking for relief from and that reinforces us so this is what happens with binge eating is that if you're looking for comfort and you have at some point in your life turned to food as providing that comfort for you, it's going to be much easier, less decision making time to just turn to the thing that's been making you feel more comfortable your entire life, which is binge eating. And you can insert any other type of behavior in there too. So if it's drinking, drug use, uh, reckless driving, whatever it might be, this is now your comfort. So. When we engage in something over and over and over, we are making connections in our mind, in our brain, um, neural pathways, and we are strengthening that neural pathway every single time that we engage in that behavior. So that's why there's a lot of compulsion. There's a lot of um, you know habits that are created that way uh, because it just is reinforced, reinforced, reinforced. Uh, so this is why it's really important to find a therapist who specializes in the treatment of eating disorders. That's super important and I will leave a link for a video uh, below for why that is. But finding a therapist who is specializes, who can understand where you're coming from, who can help you to explore why that you're engaging in the behaviors that you're engaging in because you might not even know yourself. Um, and it's different for everyone. So this video is just kind of, you know, hopefully encompasses a big part of binge eating, but it's not going to be the same for every single person. This is just kind of a recap um, of what you might see for eating disorders, uh, for binge eating disorder. Again, 
it's not about willpower. It's about addressing the root issue, and that's what a therapist can help you with. An eating disorder therapist can help you to identify the actual issue um, that caused all of this. And I know that might not be something you want to do, but it's something that is really necessary for you to start changing um, your behaviors into more productive and adaptive uh, behaviors. Um, along with that, they can also help to teach you other coping skills that are more positive and more adaptive in your life. Um, so I hope that this kind of gave you an overview of binge eating disorder and um, open your eyes if you have not experienced it or if you just think that other people um, who are experiencing it is just a matter of um, lacking willpower. I hope that this video was enlightening to you. If so, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel if you're interested in learning more about any of this type of uh, information. And I will leave a link in the description below for my blog if you're interested. And I hope to see you in my next video. Oh, let me ask you a question. Please leave a comment down below if you ever, ever recognized um, binge eating as a disorder um, or what your thoughts are on this video. And also, I want to not forget to ask you to leave requests for any concerns that you have for the upcoming holiday season for people who are struggling with eating disorders that could be a really tough time to deal with so please leave a comment about what your concerns are so that I can make content that caters around those and um, to help you the best way that I can for the season so again have a great day and I hope to see you in my next video have a great one bye